Consider the data set of the population which gives the ages of people at a barbecue by the standard deviation. I'll record all the steps, so I'll have the notes in here as well. Step one, find the mean. Since this is a population mean, what's the symbol I use? Mm, mu. And so I'll just do 9 plus 10 plus 12 plus dot 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 plus 42. All over how many total people we have? I got 8. What's the average age of the people at the barbecue? 21. So now when we find the standard deviation, it's going to tell us how far from 21 on average are the other data elements. So a small number means they're relatively close. Larger number means they're really spread out. Step two. Find the deviation of each data element from the mean. Find the deviation of each data element from the mean. In one word, that means subtract. So you're going to take each data element, 9 up to 42, and you're going to subtract 21. What you get good. Yep. Uh huh. Negative four. Yep. 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 Good. Always, 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 when you add up the deviations, you should always get zero. So use that as a way of checking your work. Always, always, always. You should always get zero. Questions on step two? Okay. Step three. Square the deviations. and add. Square the deviations and add. Add them together. Thanks. So we're going to do negative 12 squared plus negative 11 squared plus negative 9 squared plus dot 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 plus 15 squared plus 21 squared. Now, 
you're going to put this in your calculator. But to make yourself, make the job a little bit easier, notice these first uh, six here, one, two, three, four, oh, five here. When you square a negative, it becomes positive. So if you want, you could just say 12 squared plus 11 squared plus 9 squared plus dot, dot, dot. So I'm saying you could ignore the negatives on the first five there, but this is only for step three. I don't want you to hear it as, always ignore the negatives, because if you did, then in step two, those wouldn't add up to zero. And that'd be bad. What do you get as a total? I got 36. Can anyone else? You got 1036? I'll allow it. Good. So you should get 1036. Two more exciting steps. Questions so far? Step four. Oh. Sorry. I'm going to use a thinner pen because it's starting to get too much. Step four. Divide by capital N if it's a population or lowercase n minus 1 if it's a sample. We got more to write. Divide by capital N if it's a population or lowercase n minus 1 if it's a sample. where capital N or lowercase n is the number of data elements. Divided by capital N if it's a population, or n minus 1 if it's a sample, where the n's represent the number of data elements. So step four is going to vary by the problem. In this problem, it says, consider the data set that represents the population. Well, there you go. We were told it's a population. For some of them, you might have to read into it. Like, for instance, if, it's the, if it were the uh, number of cattle in Europe, did we do all the countries and the number of, uh, in Europe? No, we only did some of them. So we would do the sample there. So how many total people do we have in this party? Eight. So we're going to divide by eight. If this were only some of the people at the party, we would divide by eight minus one, or seven. So it all depends on if it's a sample or if it's a population. So we're going to take 1036 divided by eight. When you divide by eight, I think you actually get a very nice number relatively speaking. I got 129.5. Okay. Now, if this were not a nice number, oh, I'm sorry, 129.5? In fact, if any of these were not nice numbers, like going back to your mean, if your mean was 21 eighths, you leave it as 21 eighths. Don't write it as an ugly decimal or something like that. Because if you do, there goes the rest of the problem. So this is, a, this is again, the why you have a take home is because it might take a while. Because you're writing a fraction every single time. It's going to be OK. OK. Number four, the result of number four, this is called the sample, I'm sorry, this, um, this is called the uh, variance. In this case, since this is a population, is a population variance. So 
The notation for a variance depends on if it's a population or a sample. If it's a population, oh, oh, I got ahead of myself. Don't write that down. Oh, and I have to edit that part out. Oh, geez. I looked at the wrong thing. Oh, no, I was right. I'll leave. I'm not going to write it back in there. I'm too lazy at this point. Step five, take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of 129.5. Now we're definitely going to get an ugly number here. So let's round to Let's go to two decimal places. I got 11.38. And the unit is the same as the unit for the mean, which is the same as the unit for the data itself. So that's years. So translation is, that's the standard deviation, and that is the average, in quotes, difference that the data values are from the mean of 21 years, so how far spread out they are. So on average, the difference of any data value from the mean of 21 is 11.38 years. Now we go from 9 to 42, so 11 years that's a huge gap. That's one-third of the range. So that means it's very large, relatively speaking, which means these values are very spread out. If the people of the party ranged from 20 to 23, we'd have a very small standard deviation because they're much closer together. But going from 9 to 42, really spread out there. Notationally speaking, since this is a population, the symbol we use for a standard deviation is this guy. It's called sigma. This is lowercase sigma. You want to think about that commercial that was for depression medicine? That little guy there, he had like a little face. And he like bounced around. You know what I'm talking about? You want to like hug him? And then he was happy at the end of the commercial. Looks like a radish. Who's our happy radish? You are. So that's the population standard deviation. The sample standard deviation, we use a crazy symbol. You may have seen it before. It's a lowercase s. So this is the population standard deviation, and this is the uh, sample standard deviation, lowercase s. So we would use lowercase sigma for our problem. Most common student comment is, I can't draw the sigmas. You can do it. It's just a six on its side. That's all it is. All right, congratulations. That is, that wasn't too bad. That are the steps, those are the steps to find the standard deviation. Because you've asked so nicely, I will now show you the formula for a standard deviation. This is optional. You don't have to write this down. But to heighten the excitement, I will use red to make it more scary. There we go. That's good. Let me know when it hurts. All right, that's what we just did. That's the formula for a population standard deviation. You do need to know that. 
not in this class. But let's talk about what's going on here. With the help of a highlighter. Uh. That's good. So the first thing we did was we found the mean. And then what we did was we took the mean and we subtracted it from all the data values. That's the x sub i. So that was step two. Step three was we squared it. That's what this guy is doing over here. And then we added them together. Mathematically, uppercase sigma, that e thing, that says add them together. So that was step three. Then what was step four? We divided by n. And then the last step? We took the square root. So notationally, that's what's going on. So we just broke it into five steps. And your book breaks into five steps because that's horrifying. So in two weeks, when you have nothing to wear for Halloween, write that on a shirt. You'll get a lot of candy. It's true. Now, the only difference is if you had a population, I'm sorry, if you had a sample, copy, paste, oh my gosh, nightmare, merge, no group. If you had a sample, only, uh, oh come on, why, why you hate me? There we go. If you had a sample, you only change a couple things here. Namely, one, we don't call it mu. What do we call the sample mean? X bar. Oh my gosh. Who forgot to change the thickness? This guy. And two, we don't have n. We don't have uppercase n. We have lowercase n. So here we divide by n minus 1, but this still has a little n up here. So this is s, and this is lowercase sigma. So the example we did was a population standard deviation for a sample standard deviation, just step 4. Instead of dividing by 8, we would have divided by 7. But that's pretty much it.